Thank you very much, presenting officer. I stood in this chamber and said I was fed up mitigating for Tory policies in Westminster. Fed up doesn't do justice to the anger felt by myself and so many at the absolute chaos the Westminster government has brought to our communities. Remember the £350 million a week to Europe yeah. on the side of a bus and the let's fund the NHS yeah. instead? Well, as Miss Martin said, Sir Charlie Bean has said that the failure to reverse the tax cuts for the wealthy could result in the end of the National Health Service. Let's think, let sink in. The end of the National Health Service. That's how far the obsession with Brexit ideology has taken us in just a few short years. On reading this Conservative motion today, you would think they were in favour of investment in public services. Yeah. But a party that demands that the Scottish Government follows the Chancellor's yeah. new fiscal measures cannot credibly claim to care about our public institutions or indeed the public that they serve. <laughs> our NHS is facing unprecedented pressures caused by the global pandemic. But workers in the NHS are exhausted. They continue to work on the front line in the most challenging of circumstances and they are delivering on the government's recovery plan. They should have our support, our respect and our thanks. The Tory motion mentions hospital beds, but not the fact that outpatient antimicrobial therapy services allowed patients to be seen at home, saving 45,000 hospital bed days this year alone. One example of why service restructure is working. Sandish Gohani say to the fact that this was available in Ragmore in 2015 and apparently has taken seven years to roll out. Claire Adamson. It's just this, it's never, it's never, yes, we've rolled it out, it's working, it's good, it's always, why did it take so long? Why can't you just get behind the NHS as they make these improvements? Our NHS continues to outperform other UK nations. Our a &E wait times are not acceptable. But there is much, much more to do, be done in getting waiting times down for key services. But the NHS and the Scottish Government are addressing that. But Brexit has re exacerbated recruitment challenges. Is there an impact on health and social care recruitment directly leading to increased time in hospitals for patients, putting further pressure on our hospitals? Undoubtedly, we need to continue investment in frontline health and social care. The government is already acting, backing this with £1 billion NHS recovery plan, by £500 million urgent and unscheduled care collaborative funding, £40 million in additional CAMS revenue. This government cannot borrow money. This government cannot borrow money to give it away to their wealthy friends. This government is working to a fixed budget and doing the best it can, working with NHS colleagues to improve the situation going forward. I'm angry today. My staff had to intervene to get help for a young family who were left with no food over the holiday weekend. Failure in universal credit and failure of the administration and the local Labour Co Tory Council to administer the crisis grant in a timely manner. People, children are at risk of malnutrition now and will be at risk of hypothermia as the days shorten. Health inequalities, including mental health, are exacerbated by poverty and stress. The UK government is inflicting poverty on many, many more hard-pressed families, pensioners and those most vulnerable. And yet, they say, we're obsessed with the constitution and independence. Westminster at the moment, is, tr while trashing the economy and causing the pound to crash, is reviewing all retained EU law in the statute. That should work as right. That's clean beaches. That's product safety. That's food standards. And also, they seem to be obsessed with bringing back imperial measures. Well, maybe they'll understand they don't have an ounce of credibility, an ounce of empathy, or an ounce of shame in bringing this to the chamber today. Yeah.